Hey, how are you going? Hey, sorry, Mr. Call. I was on, a, I was on another phone or right before this. I apologize. Yeah, no, I figured that, so I just try every couple minutes. Uh, pretty used to that by now. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you know what the cool thing is? But, We've both got the same name. I know. I thought I thought my phone was broken for a second. I clicked. And I was like, Levi. I was like, What the heck is going on? Yeah, you know it's that, funny. That's I've, rare. And... I've literally met like three Levi's in my life. I remember there was a guy that was older than me at school called Levi as well, and he called me imposter because I was a bit younger. But uh, yeah, it's pretty uncommon. <laughs> Yeah, well, I've only met a handful. It's it's bumming me out right now, though, because in the U.S. it's becoming a new, um, like, it's a really hot baby name right now, and I'm like, damn it, it's going to screw up my whole my whole setup. Yeah, this I was, think I was, it was unique. <laughs> yeah, no one's yeah. called, like, John or Bill or anything anymore. It's always got to be a really trendy name, which is cool, as long as it's not my name. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> how well the interview has been going for you so far? Everyone giving you nice questions and all that kind of stuff? Yeah, yeah, it's it's been awesome. That's um, it's cool because we haven't done it. Um, we really haven't had the international support until recently, being on Sharp Tone and Nuclear Blast. So we're we're just having a blast um, yeah. being able to talk to all these outlets because we we tour all around the world all the time. Yeah. So it's crazy to not have the record support around the world all the time. So now it feels like one cohesive team working, which yeah. is fun. Yeah, well, you were on Rise Records before. They're a pretty big label as well. Didn't they would have been pretty good support-wise, wouldn't they? Or it's a bit different now. Oh yeah, no, no. Yeah, they're they're awesome. It's just uh, it's just such a big team with Nuclear yeah. Blast all over the world. Like we have yeah. people from Rise or from Nuclear Blast at, in Australia, which is crazy because Rise is just an office in Portland, Oregon. Oh, okay. Yeah. So it's nice to have people all over the place, just always there to work work on it and work out ideas with you and make make big things happen yeah cool well uh firstly i'll talk about uh the new album it's called shadows inside i really like the video for lost in gray it's a you know a very dark kind of video um yeah just firstly can you tell us a bit about the album how it went uh you know producing it recording it the ideas you went into the studio with and are you happy with the final result yeah i, I think it came out it came out it came out better than I think we could ever expect it and, and I think it's really cool because all these phoners and mm -hmm. interviews we've done um, has been surreal because all the responses are that it's the best Miss Mara could get and that obviously that's what we try to do every time going into the studio but mm -hmm. you always hear like oh yeah it was a good one or I really like the song or good progression you never hear like mm -hmm. those words like oh this is your best one yet and to hear that from most of the out or pretty much all the outlets now it's it's just been awesome it's making me just go crazy for the fans to hear it i'm like it feels like every day is dragging it's taking too long yeah. um but um the 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 progress is the it, it was really cool how we did this record it was a little different we did two producers which yeah. was sort of an ambitious idea on our end and um sort of gave every everyone in the label a headache that we said we wanted to do two guys instead of one because nobody really does that yeah. uh, but the reason we did it was we did um <clears throat> we were introduced to a vocal producer which i never knew was a thing and i, yeah. I was really excited because that's something that miss man's never had and something that i never even knew was an occupation mm -hmm. so to go to a guy that just focused on on my instrument a lot of the guys went to another producer and focused with like a tech shreddy guru producer who just kills it at guitar solos and kills it at drum sounds and kills it at that. It was cool to have sort of the best of both worlds. Uh, but the weird thing for this record was that um, it was completely satellite. So mm -hmm. when I was doing vocals, it was out in um, Hollywood, and when they were doing instruments, it was out in Michigan. So um, it was all over email because we're on the other side of country so that oh, yeah. that that's that was the weirdest the weirdest thing but i think we we toughed through it and, it and it came out for the best it definitely at the beginning was a little rough and yeah. we were like how are we going to make this even happen did we shoot ourselves in the foot yeah and um but it worked out it was great so for like writing the songs they would send you like a blank instrumental and you'd come up with the lyrics and vocal melody that kind of thing yeah, and it was all email, which is crazy, because I would, 
and then I would write it to the producer, and then the, the producer would talk to the other producer and be like, hey, this is our ideas, and they would be like, okay, well, here's my idea, and then they'd record, and then they'd email it back. So instead of things happening over conversations in, in real time, it took like three days to, to get one little edit made, which was definitely stressful, but at the end of the day, we made, we made it work. We tough, we tough through it. Yeah. Now, I'm pretty sure I did see you guys live uh, quite a few years ago. It was with, uh, you toured with Parkway Drive, didn't you? It was maybe three or four years ago? Yeah. Oh, man, that was that was probably five or six, I'm going to say. That was our first tour ever in oh, Australia. Oh, well, I was there. Yeah, it was a cool show. Yeah, we got lucky. Um, that was the craziest email I think I've ever had being a Miss May I, because um, we were on a tour in Europe. And then we've never met Parkway. We've always been fans. And um, they emailed us and were like, hey, this band dropped off. Do you guys want to jump on? And they're like, but you have to be here next week. And I'm like, well, we're in a European tour. And I was like, we could just drop off this tour and go to Australia for the first time. So mm. we just left from Europe. And I told the bands that we were on tour with, like, hey, we're not going to make the last three shows. And we're going to go do this tour with Parkway. And then not knowing how big Parkway was there. We showed up to like an arena and I'm like holy crap I guess we're gonna do this now <laughs> yeah they're really cool guys you know I've been uh, seeing those guys since uh, they used to play high schools and PCYC's and they kind of built up a reputation oh, yeah. like that so that's why I really love them because they're you know down to earth and they play the kids that you know don't have access to metal so I think they're really good businessmen as well as musicians yeah they're they're, they're, they're great they're they're legends man I, I seriously can't can't say enough about how amazing that band is. Oh yeah, for sure. Now I noticed with your new album, it's like you know, it's kind of similar to your older stuff. I guess it's a bit sharper, a bit more refined. Do you ever, I guess, with the new Suicide Silence album, it's so different, and uh, they tried something and it didn't work, and the fans were really angry. Do you ever worry that you know you can't stray too far from your sound because you know maybe the fans won't accept it? Uh, yeah, I think that's always the bands. Um, stress, um, but at the end of the day, you sort of have to trust your gut and mm -hmm. remember that every, there's, you can't please everybody. Yeah. I know on this record, there's a few weird songs that I was really weird. I was really scared for magazines to hear. Yeah. Everyone's came back and complimented those songs, so I was like, okay, that's good. But I think that all goes in with having time to really polish it and make sure that if you are going to do something different, that it's still you and not a new band. Because that's that's the worst is when you do a diff you change but you change so much that you lose your identity and I think that's when mm. you crash and burn and that's not what anybody wants because we've done that before we've released a record that really wasn't our identity and it sucks because you feel like you're playing a lie every night you're playing a show you're not you don't feel like that's you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you guys uh, formed in 2007, so it's been uh, you know coming up to 10 years. I'm just wondering, when you first yeah. started out, I'm guessing you were playing, you know, local shows and, you know, doing that kind of thing. When was the first moment where you kind of got your big break to tour around and, you know, go international and nationally around the country? Oh, uh, well, I think our big break was, um, there was that band, Dev Wars Prada, yeah, yeah. and they were from our hometown. And we were a local band, and we were making some big waves locally, because... Our shows, there was hundreds and hundreds of people coming to our local shows, which was crazy for the for the time. Like yeah. that doesn't really happen. So there was a lot of local buzz. We never really toured or never really sent out press kits. We were just high schoolers playing on the weekends, and yeah. a lot of kids were coming out. And um, then I remember that Worth Prada was off tour, and they ended up coming to one of our shows because they heard about us. And I was like, holy crap! Like it was one of my favorite bands mm. coming out to see us play this is crazy and I'm their guitar player introduced himself afterwards and said he wanted to help us out and help show the right people our band and um, from then on out we were just doing emails and he was introducing us to the right people and po teaching us how to like really go to the next level and um, yeah they sort of built who we are but if it wasn't for them no one would really have heard us um, mainstream wise and I think that was our big break was them because I remember they posted they literally posted a bulletin about us on MySpace yeah. and it, nothing was ever the same <laughs> they said check this band out and from then on out it was hundreds of thousands of plays a day and um, booking agents and record labels hitting us up and it was just it was it was insane it like changed our whole lives 
do you still keep in contact with those guys and tell them that you know you you owe a bit of your success to them? Oh yeah, yeah. They um, the their guitar player ended up. He does A and R now for uh -huh. Rise Records, so it ended up working out. He got a, he knew what he was looking for. Uh, cool stuff. And uh, you've also been featured on some pretty big soundtracks. Uh, it's one of the Saw movies, I think Saw Four, and uh, the Saints Row oh, video shit. game. Uh, what's it like to get uh, featured on? You know, something that uh, millions oh, I, of people I, watch I, and I play. Oh man, it, it, it it's it's crazy. I think that's like what you want when you're a kid, like when you're driving yeah. around on a um when you're driving around on GTA or something, you hear these songs, you're like, damn, that'd be cool if it was me. And then when you're in the movie and you see all these other metal bands in the soundtrack, you're like, Man, that'd be great, like if we could do that and then when it happens you're like, Oh my god, that that actually happened, like that's insane. Yeah. Um I, I don't know. It's it's sort of just it's just a surreal feeling. I remember the the video game one was really surreal because yeah. we, not that it was a bad thing, but we didn't approve it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we were on tour and we started getting all these tweets and all these kids were like, "I just got the new Saints Row and your song's on it." And we're like, "Bullshit!" And I remember going and getting a copy and driving around and hearing it. And I'm like, "Oh my god, we actually really are on this!" Like. Who told okay. them they could put our song? I, I wasn't mad, but I, I'm like, who told them they could put it? This is awesome, but I didn't say they could do this. Like, this is crazy. Yeah, so something like the record label must have negotiated on your behalf. Was that right? Yeah, I was like, it was yeah, it was like some promo thing that we ended up tracking down. But it was just funny because we never heard anything about it until the game was out and then around everywhere. Yeah, you know, it's funny with video game soundtracks because I saw about 90% of the bands that I'm really into, I uh, got into from the Tony Hawk soundtracks when I was much younger. I used to look up all those bands because oh, they had yeah. such great songs on it. Yeah, and you play Tony Hawk for like eight hours a day as a little yeah. kid and you just, those songs, are, those songs are drilled into your head. I remember we, um, sorry to off topic, but we, uh, yeah. we did, on one of our headliners, we, uh, the changeover music was the Tony Hawk soundtrack yeah. and all the kids were singing along and everyone was confused and they didn't know why they knew the songs. They're like, why do I know this? And I'm like, it's off Tony Hawk. Like everyone knows every single one of these songs that we play and changeover because everyone's played that game. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's such a cool thing to do as well. I like it. <laughs> and yeah, it was hilarious. Yeah. Now, speaking of touring, um, got any plans to come back to Australia soon? Um, yeah, it's it's in it's in talks, it's in the works. Um, mm -hmm. hope hopefully before the end of the year, but I know early next year for sure. Um, but the the thing is, we we really got a lot of international yeah love right now, so it's it's really it's really great having this new team. So I think not only will we be coming there soon, but we'll be there a lot, oh, which cool. is great. Yeah, cool. Well, I'll just ask one last question. Now, uh, with the last time I saw you guys was five years ago, uh, it was a pretty big build. There was a lot of different bands, you, Parkway Drive, and probably four or five other bands, maybe. And uh, I was just wondering if you could do, like, a uh, all-star kind of tour again, pick your favorite bands, maybe four or five bands that, you know, hypothetically would, you could tour Australia with. Who would they be? Oh, in Australia? Um, yeah. Parkway, of course. Yeah. Um... I think the bill we did over in the U.S. would actually be a great, a great Australian tour. It was yeah. Parkway, The I Art, yeah. um, Miss May I, and um, In Hearts Wake. I think that'd be a sick tour. Yeah, no, I'll definitely be keen for that. Yeah, so that 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 would be for sure for for me a a good Australian tour. Yeah, well, yeah, no man, that'd be so cool. Um, we'll just again, <laughs> uh, dig in the album uh, Shadows Inside. It's uh, out now. And, you know, I'm going to be listening to it a lot over the next week. Uh, I just want to say thanks heaps for taking your time out to talk to me. It's always good to talk to another Levi. And, um, you know, <laughs> I hope you guys come down soon, because I'll definitely be taking photos of the show if you come down Brisbane way. Oh, uh -huh, yeah, sounds great, man. Cool, man. Well, enjoy the rest of your interviews. Oh, thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, see ya. Bye. Bye. <laughs>